crap, man. It's not good to see that. You don't use like the shutter thing. There's a little red cord button.
instead.
might need some crap here in a sec.上午十点左右呢，在拖船的牵引下，我国首艘航母，也就是瓦良格号，驶入了大连的造船厂码头，结束了其第二次呃海事返航。此前，也就是今年的八月十号凌晨，是他第一次出航试验，共计五天时间，于十四号上午返航。这次航母平台呢是第二次出海试验，于出发。据介绍，这次实验的实验的时间比较长，是因为项目比较多，除了对首次海试中发现的问题进行再次的验证之外呢，还增加了一些新的实验项。
Welcome to All Hands Update. I'm Petty Officer Jonathan Pancall. These are your headlines from around the fleet. The George H.W. Bush Carrier Strike Group is headed home after spending more than seven months in the U.S. Fifth Fleet area of operations. The strike group was instrumental in combat operations while supporting Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan and Operation Inherent Resolve in Syria. The George H.W. Bush Strike Group is comprised of four ships, Carrier Air Wing 8 and Destroyer Squadron 22. The Grim Reapers of Strike Fighter Squadron 101 brought the future of naval aviation to Naval Air Station Oceana October 28th. The squadron was disestablished in 2005 but is back and now flying the FC-35 Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter. The new aircraft is designed to replace the F-A-18 Hornet and AV-8B Harrier. The F-35 is capable of performing ground attacks, reconnaissance and air defense. The U.S. Navy's forward deployed aircraft carrier, USS George Washington, departed Fleet Activities Yakuska to begin the second half of its 2014 patrol. I'm actually looking forward to the uh, port visits. The two that we have, I've never hit these ports before, so I'm kind of excited about that. The ship's crew began the patrol with a replenishment at sea, receiving aviation fuel in preparation for the return of its embarked air wing, Carrier Air Wing 5. We will spend this fall uh, working to build uh, the interoperability between the United States and its key partners in the Pacific region. During its fall patrol, the George Washington Carrier Strike Group is scheduled to be a key participant in this year's Valiant Shield exercise. For USS George Washington, I'm Petty Officer Peter Burkhardt. As Russia bombs Syria, Obama pulls U.S. aircraft carrier out of Persian Gulf. 
Once again, as Russian warships rain down cruise missiles as part of its military strike in Syria, there's now a glaring absence in the region. For the first time since 2007, the U.S. Navy has no aircraft carrier in the Persian Gulf. October 9, 2015 with each passing day, it becomes increasingly more obvious that the Muslim raised Obama is intentionally staying out of the rapidly changing situation in the Middle East to allow Russia to continue to dominate the scene. By ordering home the USS Theodore Roosevelt, the United States will have no aircraft carriers in the Persian Gulf for the first time since 2007. Did you think that you would ever live to see the day where America would lay down powerlessly before our enemies? That day is today. Welcome to Obama's America. Military officials said Thursday that they pulled the USS Theodore Roosevelt, which is home to about 5,000 service members and 65 combat planes. The ship officially exited the Gulf around 11 p.m. Eastern Time. The temporary measure is also the result of mandatory budget cuts. We must mandatorily cut budget because the security of the U.S. is not important. The USS Theodore Roosevelt, a massive nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, that which has been sitting around doing nothing but just wasting money in the area while ISIS has been having a heyday, has had a central role in the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria since August 2014, when the U.S.-led coalition started bombing the Islamist extremists. Yes, a bunch of dead targets been shooting at. Bunch of d bombing of dirt. The lack of U.S. presence in the Gulf comes as Russia is escalating its actions in the region and began pounding targets in Syria last week with airstrikes. Russian officials say they're trying to obliterate ISIS. Although the U.S. and its allies say they're instead hitting rebel fighters who oppose Syrian President Bashar Assad, a Russian ally. Yes, the U.S. and its allies are trying to throw that propaganda out there that they're just hitting rebel fighters. Russia remains a wild card in the region, and the absence of an American aircraft carrier is being noticed, said Peter Daly, a retired Navy Vice Admiral and CEO of the U.S. Naval Institute. Now, don't get me wrong. I've already made a report on this. I do believe that this is the start of the Gog and Magog war, as Russia has been in the region for quite a while now. Uh, and uh, it's just a matter of time before that unveils. And I do believe that they are after Israel's massive oil um, that they discovered. And that the Iraq and Kuwaiti oil is extremely diminished now and almost out as far as resources go. The most important thing you need a carrier for is for what you don't know is going to happen next, Daily told NBC News. That was especially important during the height of the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan when the Navy often had two carriers operating in the region. The combat planes can fly into war zones and generally act as a show of force to Iran and other nations during tense standoffs. And let me uh, say again that even though the world likes to fight over oil, it's amazing because oil is not even needed to run cars. Hydrogen energy made right out of plain old water just by getting rid of the oxygen in H2O, you have hydrogen, which is actually far more efficient. And all you need to do is grab a little bit of water. So you would just fill up wherever there is water. You know, I kind of believe that that's going to be our main transportation in the millennial Sabbath rest, going around with zero um, percent smog cars that run off of hydrogen. The USS Theodore Roosevelt, a massive nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, has had a central role in the fight against ISIS in Iraq and Syria since August 2014, when the US-led coalition started bombing the Islamist extremists. A Navy official told Washington lawmakers in July that the lack of a carrier was imminent and could potentially hamstring operations. Without that carrier, there will be a detriment to our capability there, Admiral John Richardson said during a Senate Armed Services Committee hearing prior to his confirmation in the Navy's top post.
If you ask me, it's just another setup for more war, for more attack to bring in uh, China, Russia, Iran, Iraq, Syria, all together to come against Israel and possibly the U.S. at the same time. But how is it that the U.S. will fight them when they're just stepping back? More on that in other news coming up. God bless you. Yes, I'll see you.